Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well and of course Arnie does too. Now in today's video I'll be going through five more of some of the largest freshwater fish in the world, but as I always have to say this is just one in a series and I've already been through 35 of some of the largest freshwater fish in the world. But now that's out of the way we'll head over to Africa and the Middle East as we have the sharp toothed catfish. Now the sharp toothed catfish can be found in a variety of habitats across Africa and the Middle East, but tends to prefer slower moving sluggish waters such as lakes and swamps. And one of the reasons why the sharp toothed catfish does so well in these environments is because it's an air breathing fish. And not only does this mean that it can survive in oxygen deprived waters, but they're also known to leave the water at night in search of food. And as a catfish they'll eat almost anything, as they're known to feed on invertebrates such as insects, crustaceans and mollusks. But they're also opportunistic feeders and will often feed on other fish, as well as dead animals that find their way into the water. And this species has also been known to hunt in packs, to corral smaller fish until they're trapped, and then they can soon be hoovered up. And the sharp toothed catfish may be the largest catfish in Africa, but this is a heavily debated topic as the Vundu catfish also reaches massive sizes. And if you're a fish in Africa there's many things to look out for. There's the obvious threat from predators, and then there's the brutal climate, as there are often many droughts in the dry season, but along with the lungfish the sharp toothed catfish has a way around this, as not only are they air breathers, but they can spend a very long time out of water and have been known to walk from one water source to the other. But this catfish is also a very popular food fish and because of this they've been imported into many other countries where they do not belong and have then become a problem invasive species as they'll eat almost anything and they can reach massive sizes. As this species is thought to reach a maximum length of around 1.7 meters or around 5.6 feet and at this size they weigh around 60 kilograms or around 130 pounds. And to put that into perspective that's around the same weight as an aardvark or two northern wombats. So it's no surprise they're such a problem invasive species when they can grow this large. But for our next species we'll move over to the waters of South America as we have the short tailed freshwater stingray. Now there are quite a few freshwater stingrays in South America with a lot of them being popular in the aquarium trade. But the short tailed river stingray is the largest in South America. And not only is it one of the largest freshwater stingrays in South America, but it's also one of the heaviest strictly freshwater fish as it's only really rivaled by the arapaima and the piraiba. Now this species is quite widespread throughout South America being found in Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay and Uruguay and is normally found in murky waters with muddy bottoms as these areas are the perfect hunting ground for this large stingray. As these large stingrays normally feed on mollusks, crustaceans, fish and aquatic insects. But although freshwater stingrays are very popular in the aquarium trade, they're not as popular in South America and this is especially the case with fishermen. As just like the Matoro stingray, the short tail stingray has very good camouflage and this makes them almost impossible to see in the murky waters. And if you happen to step on one of these fish, you be in excruciating pain, as they're called stingray for a reason and their barbs can pierce very deeply into your flesh. And although a female can give birth to up to 19 pups, they are a threatened species in the wild, as they are hunted by fishermen and other external factors such as water pollution and habitat degradation mean their numbers are diminishing. But if they do make it to adulthood, they can reach some massive sizes, as they can measure up to 1.5 meters or 5 feet across the disc, and at this size they weigh a whopping 220 kilograms or around 490 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a Hawaiian monk seal or around two striped dolphins. So although it's not the largest freshwater stingray, it's definitely up there. But for our next species we'll head over to Southeast Asia as we have the Perun shark. Now this species can be found across many countries in Southeast Asia and even north up into China. And as this is such a large species, they are normally only found in main river channels. But some of you eagle eyed viewers may notice that this doesn't look much like a shark at all. That's because it's a catfish, but it's part of the family that are known as shark catfish. And this species is often confused with the giant Mekong catfish and the iridescent shark. And if you watched the first episode in this series, you'll know that the giant Mekong catfish gets a little larger than this one. But unlike the giant Mekong catfish, this is more of a predatory species and is normally found at the deeper parts of rivers where it feeds on shrimps, crabs and other fish. But in these depths, it's also known to feed on other food items such as animal carcasses that sink to the bottom of the river. But the Perun shark is also a migratory species and normally spawns just prior to the monsoon season. And just like many other large migratory freshwater fish around the world, it is critically endangered. Not only because of overfishing, but also due to dams being built as this means that they are unable to migrate. But if this species is not caught by humans or is unimpeded by dams, they can become one of the largest freshwater fish in the world, as they're thought to reach a maximum length of around 3 meters or around 9.8 feet. And at this size they can weigh up to 300 kilograms or 660 pounds. 
And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a bongo or a male grizzly bear. So although it's not really a shark, it can reach shark-like sizes. But for our next species, we can move to pretty much any continent around the world as we have the common carp. Now I'm pretty sure most of you who watch this video will probably have seen a common carp as they're one of the most widespread freshwater fish in the world and are actually considered a destructive invasive species. Now common carp are a very adaptable species and are normally found in large rivers and lakes. And in these waters they are omnivorous as they feed on a variety of aquatic plants but also scavenge the substrate for insects, crustaceans and aquatic worms. But this feeding habit is one of the reasons why they're such a destructive invasive species as they churn up the bottom of rivers and lakes which in turn increases the abundance of algae and also uproots shallowly rooted plants and this not only lowers the water quality, but also decreases the amount of food for native fish and waterfowl. And although they were originally native to Asia and some parts of Europe, humans have been reintroducing them to other countries for years, as they were introduced into Australia over 150 years ago, and they were introduced into the US in 1831. And because of their ability to outcompete native fish, Australia has come up with a few solutions, as fishermen are allowed to take as many carp as they want out of rivers, and one Australian company produces plant fertilizer made from carp. But as they're such a common fish, people don't really consider them monsters. But they can reach a maximum length of around 1.4 meters or around 4.6 feet. And at this size, they weigh around 46 kilograms or around 101 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as two lynx or a seeker deer. So although it's a problem species, they can reach massive sizes. But for our last species on this list, we'll move back over to South America as we have the silver arowana. Now this species is quite widespread throughout South America and can be found throughout much of the Amazon River Basin. It tends to inhabit still tributaries and backwaters, but can also be found in flooded forests. And just like many other arowana species, they are surface dwellers, normally feeding on smaller fish and terrestrial insects, and to catch these prey items they've been known to jump up to 5 feet out of the water. Now arowana are very popular in the aquarium trade, and these fish can go for very high prices. But the silver arowana is by far the cheapest, and is arguably the largest arowana species. And although young silver arowanas can be found in groups, adults prefer a solitary lifestyle, and only really come together in the breeding season. And up until the age of around 3 weeks, the young silver arowana hide from other predators in the mouth of their father, because as we all know, there are many predators in the South American waters that would like to eat a baby fish. And although very large, adults do still fall prey to many other predators in the South American waters, such as giant river otters, caiman, and of course some of the other fish I've featured in these videos. But if given the chance to mature they can reach massive sizes, as they're thought to reach maximum length of around 1.3 meters or around 4.2 feet. But as they're such a slender fish they don't weigh very much, and the maximum weight is thought to be around 7 kilograms or 15 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a tree kangaroo or a spider monkey. So although it's the smallest on this list, it's one of the most acrobatic species. But that's about it for this video. If you have any other suggestions for fish you want me to include in these videos, then let me know down in the comments below and I'll do my best to feature them in the next episode. But thank you for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.